The Unstable Frontier, a physicist's reflection on the risks of high energy research. When humanity first began to play with fire, there was no manual, no safety protocol, no regulatory body to limit how far the flame might spread. Yet we persisted. From fire came metallurgy, industry, cities, and in time, the atom itself. But each step forward has always carried with it a shadow. The harnessing of nuclear fission was accompanied by Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The dream of spaceflight carried alongside it the echoes of Challenger and Columbia. And so too with particle physics. At CERN and in facilities like it, uh, we push deeper into the fundamental nature of reality. We collide protons at nearly the speed of light, recreating conditions that existed only fractions of a second after the Big Bang. The results are dazzling. New particles, new forces, new symmetries. But what lies beneath those discoveries, the unspoken anxieties, are the questions that science itself has not yet answered. What if, in probing the building blocks of nature, we destabilize them? What if, in tearing apart the atom, we create something that cannot be contained? Most of the public knows the Large Hadron Collider as the machine that discovered the Higgs boson. Few realize it is also the machine that sparked one of the deepest, most controversial debates in modern science. Could these experiments, in some remote and improbable corner of possibility, destroy the world? The official answers are careful. They speak of probabilities so low they are functionally zero. But probabilities are not certainties. And it is those narrow, uncomfortable gaps in knowledge, those theoretical cracks in the foundation of reality, that haunt us. Tonight, we explore the five most unsettling scenarios that have emerged from decades of discussion. Each one improbable, almost impossible, but none entirely dismissed. They are the shadows at the edge of discovery, the warnings written between the lines of our equations. Segment 1, Ice-9 in the Calorimeter. The first fear is one of contagion, not biological, but material. In 1999, as plans for the relativistic heavy ion collider in New York took shape, a small group of physicists began to worry about something called strange matter. Strange matter is a hypothetical substance composed of strange quarks, cousins of the up and down quarks that make up ordinary protons and neutrons. The concern was this, if strange matter is more stable than normal matter, then creating even a single fragment, a so-called strangelet, could trigger a catastrophic chain reaction. Ordinary matter would be converted atom by atom into strange matter. A lab bench, a researcher's hand, a building, a city, a planet. It is a scenario chillingly similar to Kurt Vonnegut's invention of Ice-9, a crystal that froze any water it touched, eventually locking the entire world in ice. In our case, it would not be water, but matter itself. The probability? Incalculably low. Yet in 1999, the theoretical risk was high enough that the Rurchik team commissioned a formal safety review. A paper was written, published, and debated. The conclusion was that strangelets, if created at all, would be unstable. They would decay before they could spread. The world moved on. Rar. But here is the detail that unsettled me as a physicist. The safety was not absolute. It rested on analogies, on assumptions about cosmic rays colliding harmlessly with the atmosphere. It rested on what had not yet happened, that Earth had not already been converted. That absence was our reassurance. But absence is not proof, it is merely survival, so far. Imagine for a moment the scenario if the calculation were wrong. The first strangelet appears not with a bang, but a whisper. A single particle inside a calorimeter invisible to the human eye. It lingers, it touches another, and suddenly the chain begins. Within seconds, the experiment is gone. Within minutes, the laboratory collapses into a puddle of dense quark matter. Within hours, the planet begins to unravel, atom by atom, consumed not by fire or explosion, but by transformation. The end of the world would not come as chaos or panic, but as silence, a quiet, inevitable conversion spreading outward until there was no Earth to speak of. Physicists assure us this will not happen. I assure you it is unlikely. But in our field, unlikely does not mean impossible, and when the stakes are a planet, that distinction is more than academic. The second fear concerns gravity, the most familiar of forces, yet the least understood. At the Large Hadron Collider, two protons collide at nearly the speed of light, producing energies unseen since the dawn of the universe. The hope was that these collisions might, in rare cases, generate microscopic black holes, pinpricks of infinite density smaller than an atom, 
born from the focused violence of the event. The prevailing theory was comforting. Any such black hole, if it existed, would evaporate almost instantly. This was the reassurance given to the press, to governments, to the public. Stephen Hawking himself had proposed the mechanism, Hawking radiation, a steady leak of energy that would cause tiny black holes to dissolve before they could do harm. But theories, however elegant, are not certainties. Hawking radiation has never been observed directly. It remains a hypothesis, resting on equations untested by experiment. What if the theory is wrong? What if a micro black hole once created does not evaporate? In that case, it would drift downward, pulled by Earth's gravity, sliding silently through the detectors, through the concrete shielding, through the bedrock. It would oscillate through the core, consuming atoms one by one. At first, the rate would be imperceptible, perhaps grams of matter per year. But the process is exponential. With each atom swallowed, the black hole grows. And as it grows, its appetite accelerates. In 50 years, it could weigh as much as a mountain. In 70, as much as the moon. By then, tidal forces would tear continents apart. Earth would deform, spaghettified by the mass at its core. And then, collapse. A planet consumed not in fire, but in hunger. The defenders of collider safety pointed again to the cosmos. If such black holes could be created, they argued, then cosmic rays striking Earth's atmosphere would have done so billions of times over. And yet Earth still stands. It is a strong argument, but it relies again on absence, on what has not been observed. It assumes conditions in the collider are no different than those in space. It assumes what nature does at random is the same as what we engineer with precision. We believe we are safe, but belief is not proof. And deep within the Earth, a silent question lingers. What if something has already begun? If strangelets and black holes threaten matter itself, the third fear threatens reality. The Higgs boson, discovered at CERN in 2012, was hailed as the final piece of the standard model. It explained why particles have mass, why matter coheres. But the discovery also came with a troubling footnote. Measurements of the Higgs suggested that our universe does not sit in the deepest valley of stability. Instead, it may rest in what physicists call a false vacuum, a temporary metastable state. Like a ball balanced in a shallow depression, stable for now, but vulnerable to collapse if disturbed. If true, then a violent enough event could tip the Higgs field into its true vacuum. The result would be catastrophic. Imagine a bubble forming, not of fire, but of new physics. Inside the bubble, the laws of nature are rewritten. The constants of chemistry are altered. The masses of electrons, protons, and quarks change. Molecules no longer bind. Uh, atoms themselves fall apart. This bubble would expand outward at the speed of light, erasing everything in its path not in minutes or hours, but instantly. One moment you are here, listening. The next, the very concept of listening no longer exists. Some have argued that if this were possible, it might already have happened. Perhaps somewhere in the cosmos, another civilization triggered their own vacuum decay. If so, their bubble would already be racing outward, invisible until it arrived, ending us without warning. The mathematics of metastability are debated. Perhaps the universe is safer than it appears. Perhaps the false vacuum is deeper than we think, but the possibility remains. In our effort to understand reality, we may have given it the push it needed to end itself. The fourth fear is more subtle, but no less terrifying. For decades, physicists have searched for magnetic monopoles, hypothetical particles with only one magnetic pole, north without south, or south without north. Their discovery would confirm theories of grand unification, binding together the forces of nature. But monopoles, if they exist, come with a devastating side effect. They may catalyze proton decay. In ordinary physics, protons are stable. They endure for longer than the age of the universe itself. This stability is the reason atoms and we exist. Yet some theories suggest that in the presence of a monopole, this stability unravels. A proton encountering a monopole could decay into lighter particles, leaving the monopole unchanged and ready to consume the next. One particle becomes two, two become four, and soon the very fabric of matter dissolves into radiation. The danger of the monopole is not its mass, nor its energy. It is its permanence. It is the perfect catalyst, never consumed, endlessly erasing protons, turning the building blocks of atoms into dust. If such a particle were created in a collider and escaped containment, there would be no explosion, no dramatic signal. 
just the slow, relentless disintegration of matter, walls, air, oceans, flesh, until nothing recognizable remained. It is, in a sense, entropy made flesh, the, uni the universe's death accelerated by a single particle. The fifth and final fear is the strangest. Not destruction by matter, but invasion by mathematics. Modern physics suggests the universe may have more than th three dimensions of space. Some theories propose as many as 11, curled up invisibly at scales too small to see. At CERN, experiments have been designed to search for evidence of these hidden dimensions. The method is simple. Smash particles together, and if energy appears to vanish, it may have leaked into another dimension. But what if energy does not merely leak? What if, in reaching across the dimensional divide, something reaches back? The risk here is not of fire, nor collapse, nor decay, but of contamination. A patch of altered geometry governed by alien rules. Angles that do not sum to 180. Distances that refuse to remain constant. A cancer of space itself. Imagine a tunnel in the collider where the laws of physics no longer apply. A place where time folds in strange ways, where matter twists into impossible shapes. Not a monster, not an invader but a patch of reality incompatible with our own, spreading, rewriting, consuming. How do you contain such a breach? How do you quarantine physics itself? This is not merely speculation. In 2008, a group of CERN researchers published models suggesting that extra-dimensional effects could, in theory, manifest as localized instabilities in space-time. The probability, again, was vanishingly small. But the question remains, what if the door is not locked, but open? Each of these scenarios is improbable. Each rests on theory, stacked upon theory, speculation upon speculation, and yet none can be fully erased from the ledger of possibility. As scientists, we tell ourselves and the world that the risks are negligible, that the benefits of knowledge outweigh the shadows it casts, that to stop, to yield to fear, would be to abandon the very spirit of discovery that defines us. But in the quiet of the control room, when the beams are aligned and the countdown begins, I sometimes wonder, what if this is the shot that tips the balance? What if tonight we press the button that undoes the world? History will judge us as pioneers or as fools, but history itself may not survive to render the verdict. This is the unstable frontier, a place where knowledge and annihilation walk hand in hand, a place where every discovery whispers a question, how much reality can we afford to risk in order to understand it?